This is Calvin Castine. It's the fifth day of April 2003. And we're welcoming you, depending on where and when you're seeing this, it's either the second or third installment, depending on how we ran out the first uh, two rounds of this. This is the 11th annual Eight Ball Billiards Regional Winter Pool Tournament, formerly known as the Northern Tier Pool Tournament. We are starting off in the loser's bracket, and it's going to be Mike Finnegan, who lost to Rick Giro, and Pat Therian, who lost to Herb Collins. This is the seventh match of the day. It's the best two out of three, and joining me we have uh, Jay Montpelier, the tournament director, as Therian breaks. And uh, I'll let Jay talk for a while while I eat some uh, potato salad. So Pat Therian just broke. He's uh, representing JB's in Ross's Point, formerly known as the American Legion. Playing against Mike Finnegan, who's representing the Country Club in Moores. So just to remind you that uh, this is the first match in a loser's bracket, so whoever loses here will be going home, or they can stay and watch if they'd like. I know in years past you did t tell them they had to go home after they lost. I remember, you, I remember you saying that. Yeah, they didn't like that, did they, Calvin? So I caught myself on that one. So Pat shooting the lows. Pat traveling in from Georgia, Vermont. Mike from Keysville, New York. Mike works in Champlain in the Kimpex building for quite a few years now. I just bumped the camera, but we're still in focus pretty good. Mike has one of the tables out of the Toise pool hall in Keysville that we honored a number of years ago. He's going for the eyeballs. The atmosphere seems to be quite a bit more relaxed after our break. Mike made a nice kick shot off the rail. He still has opportunity. He's got the 13 in the corner. The 9 can go back in the other corner after that. <coughs> so how are the roads, Calvin? Well, on this uh, 5th day of April, there have been uh, uh, a little bit of icing problems, but at the moment they're quite well. Just got back from Peru and the roads are in good shape at the moment. Mike just played a nice shot in that nine ball. He came down here to get his 11 in the corner. Trying to look at it again because he came a little bit far, but he still has it. Very nice shot. Referee handing him the token. It's 
just going to cut it in the corner. Very good try, that was a hard shot. Everybody's playing excellent today. It's too bad to see somebody lose. Pat playing with confidence. He's got three balls left. Shooting very well, left an angle on his seven, so he could come back over here on this rail to put the eight where he's standing. Okay, Therian looking for the token. Chalk. Chalk would be the token. Man with the token left. <laughs> They're in looking to take the first game and he does. First game of the of the match in the losers bracket. Okay, Finnegan, break. Second game. Best two out of three. Got choice. Now one of each. He's got a choice, but that doesn't matter. He makes. Uh, he can make three of one color and on the uh, high or low or whatever, and he still got a choice. Jay's wondering who won the first game. He was gone. Shooting the lows. That was a safety shot. Okay, Therian now, surveying the situation. And two minutes to, uh, to shoot. Things seem to be going slower than usual this year, Jay. It's just uh, only have six games done, so six matches done so far, out of a possible 15. Well, the guys are really thinking about their shots, and number two, every match has gone to three games. So that makes a big difference. 
Calling something in the corner. I don't know what he could possibly put in the corner, but tried to put the 14 there. Uh, there is a trophy, and there is a trophy in the cue stick for each of the top three winners, right? That's right, and then um, all eight winners get a, a cheaper value cue stick. Uh, we say eight winners because everybody here had to qualify at a regional pool uh, establishment. Pretty much all the bars, I would assume. Yeah, all the bars in uh, the Northern Tier and Merrill and Ruthie's Tavern in Danamara. Okay, this year you're honoring a, a Lion Mountain pool hall, is that correct? Costinos and Marinos. It closed in 1953. And a little bit later I'll go over the story. So there probably aren't too many people playing here who ever played in that, either one, in that establishment, huh? No, I don't think there'd be anybody here that would be old enough. But I did get a nice group of guys together up at the American Legion in Lion Mountain. And uh, they told me a lot of tales about the place. But it's been closed for 50 years. Uh, last year, was it you honored the uh, pool hall in Malone, was it? Or? Yeah, Barton's Billiard Academy. How do you pick up the... Uh, Many players that come back the following year after being introduced to it. Any of those Malone players that played for the first time last year come back this year? Well, a lot of our players in Malone last year traveled from here. But uh, there was a couple players in Malone that wanted to play this year, but other tournaments uh, prohib prohibited them from doing that. But next year, uh, Jeff Benware will be back. There isn't a lot of difference between the uh, value of the first and second place cues or the size of the trophy. It's, it's the prestige that's involved in winning this. The bragging rights, so to speak, Calvin. They get their name on the plaque. I think he's going to shoot six. Tight, tight cut. He's going to get by that three ball. Just wanted to touch it. Didn't really have much of a chance of putting it in. <clears throat> Except for that eight being so close to them. Uh, a nice shot would have been to kick that six into the five and knock the four in, but that eight is awfully close to that pack. Well, I was looking at it, Calvin. Actually, the four probably wouldn't go in, so he, that's why he didn't disturb it. From over here at our angle, it kind of looks like it'll go in, but it actually won't. Therian being very deliberate. Okay, we shut it off here. He's uh, <laughs> using up a lot of air time here while deciding on his shot. Another safety. I'll never get used to this safety business here, Jay. Well, it's a very important pool because you don't want to just open up the table and leave the other guy wide open.
Uh, the first few years that Hometown Cable covered this, Bob Venn uh, ran the camera and the microphone, and uh, during his college days, Bob had a, a pool table set up in Jay-Z that he raised a little money off. Did, how did he react to this defensive type of play? I don't think he saw much of that in the, in the early 50s or in the late 40s when he was running that, that the one pool table pool hall, one, yeah, one pool table pool hall. Well, he, yeah, it did kind of surprise him a little bit, but it really, uh, it was interesting how he called the shots, and it's been so long since he played. He had a, still had a good knowledge of the game. Okay, he's going to supposedly try to put the 10 in. And I think he did try. <laughs> and it's a good lead, too. He's, he's got to hit his ball first, so he's not going to try to get that uh, four. He's going to come out and get the three. Try to put it on the side. I was going to put it down in the corner and miss, miss the shot. Okay, he's going to shoot for the side pocket here. This should be a gimme here. Now he's got a shot at the 14 down below. Or a 10, excuse me, it's a 10 ball. Hoping to break something out. Hoping to hit the 14 or the or the 13 up here in the top. It didn't happen. Well, they are still stuck right there. He might have a shot at slicing the the uh, 13 in, but uh, that doesn't give him much for the 14. If he slices it that much, I doubt if he'll hit the 14. Because he'll have almost no action off the cue ball. So again, he plays it safe. Finnegan sh shooting the three. Seven. Seven. They're all red, whatever it's a make. It's a low ball. That <laughs> break here. Yeah, he's got to he's got to hit his ball first. So he has no chance of of putting a ball in here by hitting his ball first because he's got to hit that five. And uh, I suppose it's possible if he hits it hard enough. <laughs> That uh, four would go in, but that ain't gonna happen here. Well, tough shot for Therian, but if he can get that 14 in. Okay, he's decided what he's going to do. He just touch the ball, hide the eight, hide the cue ball. There's, he has a, I think, he's going to try to come back and get that, I think he's going to shoot for the four, not the five. Come back off the, off the bank. Give it a try. So Therian should be able to get the 14, but getting position on the 8 is going to be the tough part. Okay, after much deliberation, he's shooting the 14. His concern wasn't making the 14, uh, but uh, I. Apparently he wasn't trying to make it. No, because he was trying to give himself an opportunity to break that eight out on the next shot. If Mike gives him an area where he can see it. 
Oh, Finnegan's got uh, tough here. That five is right against the bank. So he work. Yeah, but uh, he can uh, he can hit that 14. But what I've seen so far, I don't think he's going to try to make it. I think he'll. Nope. He's just going to try to touch it and then play some more defense. <laughs> okay, he's decided he's going to go down and come back. That's not quite the way I would have shot it, but his plan is to, uh, to hide it and it uh, didn't work that time. And he scratched. So it'll be a ball in hand. Finnegan will shoot the five. Have himself in a good position for the four. <coughs> and now he's going to get the token. <coughs> token has to be placed near the pocket that he's going to put it in, or hopes to put it in. It's pretty much a straight in shot. If he doesn't follow it, he'll win it. So we are 1-1. One, one. We are 1-1 one, one, and we'll go to a decisive third game. Okay, Therian from Georgia, Vermont. About to break in the decisive game. The winner, loser of this game loses the match and is eliminated from the tournament. Scratches as the ball comes, eight ball comes, excuse me, the cue ball comes off the table. It counts as a scratch. So it'll be ball in hand for Finnegan. He made uh, two stripes. So if Finnegan decides to go with the high balls, he'll. Uh, and high balls are pretty well spread around, so I would think he might uh, might go with the high. The only one that would be tough would be the the nine ball later on. The others are plus it holds up the two low balls. Okay, he decided to go with the thirteen. Got to make sure he gets that cue ball out of there so he can shoot something after the 13 goes in. And he does, draws it back. He's got the choice of the 14 or the 10. <coughs> and uh, he's going to go with the one closest to the bank. Or he's going to go down below, but we'll see. The 10 would be the toughest to get position on, and he's got position on it, so that should be the one he'd go with. You agree with that, Jim? Oh, yeah. He was just looking to see what he had next. He wanted to draw it back to make sure he had a shot. You know, 14 inside. You got the 11 ball, and 9 is still the problem. It's resting on the bank. To bring the cue ball back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gonna bank it. He does, but he's hitting himself. It's not quite where he wanted to get the cue ball. Yeah. He was just hoping to pull it back a little bit and then cut the nine. Which surprised me that he would go with the bank shot because by taking the bank shot, he had to hit it harder. Well, actually, Calvin, he didn't come out far enough. He wanted to come out a little further. So he wouldn't have to bank it. Wow. Beautiful. He almost made it. Yep. Very nice try. And Therian, look at that. He's going to shoot within 10 seconds. Went too hard. He might get lucky here on the leave. Or can he see it from this angle, Calvin? From this angle, it doesn't look like he can. Just a matter of whether that three ball is hiding it or not. Doesn't look like it is. Looks like he can see it. 
gives him a good angle. But, but he's in trouble here. Here's the eight ball, and there's the cue ball. You've got to hit his ball first. Now, if he doesn't hit his ball first, he loses. Nope. nope. He gives ball in hand. Okay. The only way he would lose is if he fouled with a touching the cue ball or touching another ball or something like that. Or a scratch. Or a scratch. Perfect shot. There it is. Incredible. He earned that one. He earned that one. So Finnegan will advance in the loser's bracket. And uh, Therian is eliminated. Okay. Once again in the loser's bracket. The second game in the loser's, second match in the loser's bracket. Bill Seaver and Tim Lord. Uh, by being eliminated first, uh, Therian gets his choice of uh, which cue stick he wants. The bottom five finishers get a cue stick of lesser value than the top three get. But by being eliminated first, he gets first choice out of the leftover cue sticks. <coughs> so that was good planning on Therian's part. And he lives in Georgia, Vermont, so he gets to head home early. So he had it all planned out, I think. So it looks like Lord is going to break. And Lord gets, uh, I think, one of each. No, he got the eight ball. He got the eight ball on the break. He got the eight ball on the break. So eight ball on the break. Tim Lord and uh, <laughs> Bill Seaver just standing there stunned. <laughs> Just dawned on him that he lost game one. So now, now it'll be uh, Seaver's turn to break. Bill Seaver's kind of just stood there stunned, wondering what was going on, and he just, <laughs> and it dawned on him he'd lost. Well, Bill's been known to get an eight ball breaker too, also. I saw uh, Tim uh, slip the the referee a ten dollar bill, does that help? <laughs> Probably set him up an eight ball break. Put an eight ball in the corner, is that, is that what, what, what did it? It don't matter where it goes, ain't Calvin? <laughs> Whoa, eight, eight ball break. Look at that. Two eight ball breaks. <laughs> Alright. Two eight ball breaks. All right, Tim Lord looking to wrap it up here with three shots. That would be the record. That would be the record, I'm sure. Each one won, each on, a, on an eight ball break. <laughs> wow. We could have a three shot match here. Yeah, very possible. I want the corn. Okay, Lord will try to keep the magic going. No, 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 no. Now we can play one. Okay, tight racks, you said, right? That's what we like. And eight ball's moving, but it's not near a pocket. Well, Calvin, we have two little trophies for eight ball on the break. So you've used them both up? And we've used them both up. So it doesn't Don't pay anybody. Trophy, so, that's all <laughs> right, so nobody else can do it now because they're not going to get a trophy. It's kind of ironic about those little trophies too because uh, they were in Bob Venn's uh, collection of stuff and Tom Venn gave them to me when uh, we were cleaning out the building so I took the player off the top and put an eight ball on it. Big one. Yeah, Bob, uh, founder of the uh, local trophies and awards business, sold it to uh, Dick Letourneau and uh, Bill Conley. And now our son Laterno and Jeff Menard operate it.
Uh, Mr. Therian head out, did he? Yes, he's on his way back to Georgia, Vermont. On his way to Georgia. Did he ever tell you about the night that the lights went out? No, he didn't explain he didn't, that one to me. Did he explain that to you? Ask him about it next time. Both seaboard. Shooting the high ones. Shooting for the nine here. Or no, excuse me, the fourteen. So once again, Calvin, uh, this may be a quick match, but uh, every match today has gone to three games. Ball breaks the ten out. And put the ten in the in the corner. Uh, 15 still isn't uh, still doesn't see the pocket and he doesn't really have a good shot on the, on the 13 <coughs> he's going to shoot uh, you know, shoot the 15 whether he's trying to make it or not. He's going to go for safety probably put the 7 in. I couldn't tell did he hit his ball? Yep. He hit the 15 and played the 7 opened up his pocket. All right. uh, perfectly legal. Here, I'm gonna go with the five or with the six. We'll see, that's his choice. You can't see the one here to put that one in. And he's not uh, he's wondering which shot will leave him with the best position. Put the six into the corner, he misses it. Ball went in, but not in the pocket. Uh, doesn't, uh, didn't a couple years ago you didn't? Have to call your pocket. That's right, Callan. Um, it's been a few years now that we've kind of stiffened the rules up a little bit. To I never liked that. Yeah, you really need to at least claim your pocket. Very nice shot. It sets him up perfect for the eight ball too. Again, loser is eliminated. Yeah. And it's too bad about this match because it came down to one game where they had to shoot the whole game out. Yeah. Token is up. Here's the eight ball in the corner. And he's got it. Tim Lord will be the second one eliminated. We're running out of people in the loser's bracket, so we're going to have to get some people out of the winner's bracket to fill in the loser's bracket. So we're going to come back with a 
first of a couple games in the winner's bracket. Okay, I was wrong. We do have four people remaining in the loser's bracket. Uh, Bob Barnes, who has a win and a loss. And uh, Mike Finnegan, who lost, then won. So they each have a win and a loss. Barnes will break. A high one, but he gets his choice, and he's got two high ones, so but it's still his choice. And it's his choice, he's got to uh, make a ball before his choice counts. That's right. So he could say, I want, to, I want the high ones, but until he makes another one, he doesn't have the high ones. Hey, uh, Bob called Big Ones. Uh, just to let the audience know of our uh, sponsoring locations right now, we have JB's and Ross's Point is out of it, and Ruthie's Tavern in Dana Moore is out of it. We have Armin's playing right now, Bob Barnes playing against country clubs, Mike Finnegan. Okay, Jay, let's get into a little bit about the, the qualifying tournaments, how you spread the word about the uh, qualifying tournaments. Uh, uh, after you've picked your eight sites for the, for the year, you pick the dates at those uh, places, and how do, uh, how do they, people play, pay to get in there? How do they? It costs $5 per location that you play in, and we go around and put up posters in those locations. And uh, this year, uh, due to the fact that uh, the tournament's usually held in February, and we postponed it uh, because of construction. Uh, I called all the finalists of previous years and let them know about the tournament, so that's why we had a, a very good turnout with past finalists this year. Might be a good time, Calvin, to um, go over who came in second place in the different locations because a lot of times, uh, the difference, as, as the people have seen today, uh, the difference between one shot and another shot uh, would be the difference between winning or losing. And some of these people uh, that came in second in these locations, it, it got right down to, uh, to a shot in the eight ball. Country Club Tavern, the second place player was Bill Hathaway from Morrisonville. Bill shoots a very good game. Uh, the second place player at the VFW was Randy Howard, and Randy was a finalist last year. And the third place player, uh, the third place Bullmart, the second place player for them was Aaron Bashard. He was a newcomer to the tournament. He's a very young fella and he shoots an incredible game. It was very close uh, with him and Herbie Collins. For Armands, Sean Agony came in second. That was a close match. And uh, there are seven solids on the table. Actually, eight with the eight ball, and Bob Barnes attempting to put it in and win this first game of the match. And he blocks the pocket, but doesn't go in. Continue. Okay, so at the alley out, um, the second place player, uh, and there was 18 players there, was Kevin Hill. Kevin's been a finalist over a number of years. Uh, at Ruthie's Tavern uh, in Danamora, it was Neil Young, and Neil Young is a past champion as well as a finalist over the years. And at JB's and Ross's Point, it was uh, Rick Giroux. And uh, he came back the next one to, to win at Manny's, and Jason Lord took second. So as you said in earlier part of our broadcast, it's not unusual for some of these guys that they don't win a tournament to get in four or five of these qualifying sites. Yes, in fact, uh, we had a couple players this year that played in all eight. And, and lost all eight. And lost all eight. So it cost them $5 to get in, plus uh, they got to pay to play, right? Most places were a dollar a game for pool, and then whatever they uh, had for refreshments uh, can get to be a very expensive day. Uh, how do they decide who paid a dollar, it's not a dollar each, it's one dollar for the whole game, right? They right. It, well, what, it? no, what they do is they flip the coin like they do here and then the other guy uh, pays to rack them and then they alternate.
Finnegan looking to sneak that uh, two ball by the, the eight. But, uh, he's going to leave it there for a while. I don't know. He may not get as good a shot at it in the future here if he doesn't shoot it now. Well, it is a big pocket there with the eight ball. It would go off the eight. Yeah, he's got a good angle on it. I, you know, if you got an angle on one close to the bank, He's probably going to draw it back, Cal, and get a little better of an angle on it. Oh, you were right. It's much better angle. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to run the three up. Run the three, then follow come it Come back down. on the two. You don't have to call the, the kisses or anything, just call the, the pocket. Snuck it by there, knocked the eight ball out. So where's he going to go with the eight? The side? You know, I thought he was going to try to breeze it by there, but there must have not been enough room. Well, there maybe had been enough. Maybe there was enough room and he didn't do it. Try to put the eight ball on the side. Misses it. So it leaves the door open for the the veteran, Bob Barnes. <laughs> Not an easy shot though, Calvin. No, 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 he's just worried about scratching. And Bob Barnes takes game one. Okay, you might want to tell people who our referees are today. Okay, racking the table, we have Mike Lashway from West Shay Z, and the other referee is Stubby Kilburn. Finally, two years ago, and he's from uh, Sable Forks. Okay, Barnes has choice, nothing went in. for the high ones. Slices the 11 in. Uh, he's going after the 15. This is the ninth, ninth match of the day, correct? Yep, ninth match. Possible 15 matches with a double elimination tournament. Could end in 14. Okay, he's got the 13 in. He's got little choice here. He's going to have to shoot for the 12. It's 14 and 2 are well hidden. And try to put the 12 down in the bottom the far corner. Nope. Went, went, on the, went to the side with it. Eh? It was a very hard shot. He was yeah. over balls and he cut it in the side. All you could see was his shirt. So no idea. Right, left himself with a view of the 14, but he's still going to get that 10 and the, and the 9. Seems the pockets don't like to be stuffed, Calvin. No, no, they jam it, they uh, rattle around in there to not 
right in and they don't yeah. go in. Game two of the match. Finnegan must win to stay in. Force the decisive third game of the match. Puts the seven ball in now. Must hit his ball first, so I don't think he can see that one without hitting the nine first, so he's not going to shoot the one. Go for the six. <coughs> Scratches a so ball in hand for for Bob Barnes, but Bob's got uh, that nine and ten that are kind of kind of hidden there. He's, Maybe deciding if that nine can kick off the five and go in, huh? What do you think? I think he's really trying to get an idea of how he can make that 14 and break him out. You don't want to break him out too far. That eight is near the side pocket and you break him out. That's the direction those balls are going to head. <laughs> Shoot the 14. Ricochet back and hit that cluster. But the eight ball is right there. Uh, he's got to be careful. It's too hard here. That four, something puts in that four into the eight. But he's he got a shot behind. Might be able to see. I don't know. Can he see the nine in that corner? He's going to try, I guess, to put the nine into the corner in the bottom, bottom of our screen. Okay, Finnegan up now. He's gonna. I don't know if he called the two or the or the three. Now he's shooting the two. <clears throat> that one uh, rattled in. Yeah, he was right center. Do you think he'll uh, shoot that three and try to get position on the six? Yeah, he's looking at it. So it's a pretty finicky shot. He's decided to go for the, the three. He'll want to follow. Nope. Want to follow it and get position for the six. He's still got the uh, three balls over here and surrounding the eight. But if he can get that three and six in, he'll be in position to start shooting at them. No, nope, surprised me, he did not follow it. I thought he'd try to get position on the six. Well, see, now he can go on the six in the other corner, Calvin, and it's not such a finicky shot. He was kind of worried about being able to hold it there. If he didn't hold it there, he wouldn't have had another shot. Send the four up, and, and I would assume follow it. Get two balls close to the bank. 
the position on the six. And you still got that four ball that's in the next to the side on the bank, or near the bank. Who's got to come back here with the cue? He does. He gets excellent position. He's going to send it all the way down into the corner. Well, we haven't uh, hadn't put the eight ball in yet. Earlier today, we had uh, one where the eight ball went in, and the cue ball just followed the rail, followed the rail, and spun in. You got to put some top on it because you can't see the bottom, so you could avoid following it. And he did. So this will go to a uh, decisive game three in this match. Loser will call it a day. Okay, Barnes. Bob Barnes will shoot. <coughs> Barnes, a faithful viewer supporter. Makes two high ones. But, you got tough shots on any other high ones there. He's that's why it's a good rule, Calvin. After you make a break and you make one ball, you should be able to have choice. And the BCA, Billiard Congress of America rules, states that it's still choice after the break. So that's why we decide to go that way. It doesn't penalize a player for making a ball in a break. He tried for the low and didn't. Uh... So it's still choice. <laughs> Didn't didn't really have a shot at the at the stripes or the high balls, and uh, Finnegan's going to try to uh, take advantage of having a two ball lead, and he does. So. But Barnes failing to make the shot it became Finnegan's choice, and he put one in. So. Good. This is a tough leave here, though. And he's got the 9, the 12, and the 14. And not a clear shot at any of them. To, with a clear shot at the pocket, at least. Can definitely hit the 14, but can't put it anywhere. Try to put it in the corner. Probably off of three. Whoa, nice, nice try. try, nice try. That looks like Barnes got a 5 3 combination. I don't think you want to go quite that far, <laughs> Calvin. No shot at the five, and he's got to shoot over the five to, to hit any of the others that he wants to shoot at. You don't get a lot of ball to shoot at when uh, you got a ball that close to you. You don't have much surface to, to play with. Plus, you have that chance of touching that ball uh, and giving uh, the other guy a ball in hand. Yeah, if he touches that five with a cue, it would be a foul. And the referee's making sure he doesn't uh, move it. Hit it, but didn't really set it up too good. <clears throat> Put the one down here, but I think he would have preferred to leave it right in front of the pocket. Uh, he didn't think he was going to just shoot one ball that round, but...
Well, he's gonna try to slice that 14 into the side. I'm blocked out here, but apparently he can see the pocket by the five. Nope, he can't. No, he couldn't. I didn't think he could, but. Well, Barnes has a couple of choices here. He's gonna go go with the four or the six. So take the four. The type of shots you you have to make if you're gonna win yeah. this. He was actually looking pretty good there if he would have made that one. Hey Finnegan. That was a hard one. You wanted to kind of hold it there, Calvin. But yeah, it came up a little high, but he can still see the, the nine. It's a good slice. Is it? I don't know if Herbie Collins could shoot that one. <laughs> no, I don't think he could stretch that far. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, just enough legs to, to make that one. He's got a, a shot at the eight, but I don't know where he's going to put it. He'll have to put it in the corner, I assume. Or try to. Oh, he's going to come back with it. Ooh, can can he get that room there? Yeah, can he get that cue ball out of the way, too? Well, he's going to use uh, left hand English, which will pull the cue. Eight ball right. Oh. No dangerous scratching here. Uh, two balls holding him pretty good, Cal. Well, he could kiss off that two ball and go right down into the corner. I don't think he's going to shoot it too hard. Good shot. Didn't scratch. Forcing Bob to run him out. Uh, Bob is using uh, two sticks here. I noticed he had one stick and he came over. Well, he must have shot with his breaking stick and just realized it. Yeah, he'll go. Nope, I thought he was going to go for that six. He's still deciding what his next shot would be probably. I think he's looking to see if he can put that two in. Now he's going to look down below. He's going to go with the five. Now that stopped dead. That stopped dead. Put some Velcro on that one, huh? In, follows it up. Is he going to go for the two or the six? Uh, I think he wanted to stop it a little bit before that and play the six, but. Oh, if he's got a slate of the two, that's a tougher shot, so. The asylum lining up. He wanted to actually shoot that one next. And trying to decide where he wanted to, to leave the cue ball for the one, but he, the six is a, a doable shot. If he doesn't come back too much, it's going to be tough. He's going to have to put some follow on it. Boy, it looks like he might have it. 
Like Just barely. It's close. It's close. Is, uh, how close will he get to being able to shoot the eight ball? Is that one ball is going to be all he can do to make that? He's thinking about it. He's going to come over and look at it. Yeah. Because I don't think he's going to get any action off that cue ball to knock loose that eight. No, he couldn't get over that far. Cut it a little too fine. He worried more about the next shot than the shot he was making. And that's what we see sometimes. I haven't seen a lot of that today, but uh, he uh, beautiful. Hey, beautiful. Good shot. Good shot. Okay. Good Bob Barnes well. is eliminated. Mike Finnegan will advance, and we'll be back with another game in the loser's bracket. Okay, Herb Collins. Uh, the rack is not tight enough. So it'll be re-racked. Okay, this will be the 10th uh, game of the day. We'll be moving to the winner's bracket after this game. Herb Collins and Bill Seaver. And one of them will be eliminated. And we'll have four remaining. And out of the four remaining, three will get uh, trophies. A lot of action on the eight. But he scratched. And Bill Seaver was saying he wanted eight to go in after he saw the scratch. Ball in hand. <laughs> Who's going after the three? Maybe. <coughs> and he's decided to go for the three. to go for the one. Comes up and got the four, five, six, and the seven. He's going to shoot for Okay. Looks like he's made up his mind. down in the left hand corner this is a little radical. I'll try to put the four on the side. Decided if he can do anything with the five. And he's decided to go with the four. Boy, you got some action on that. Doesn't leave him too much, though, does it, Calvin? 
No, you can uh, you can see the five, and that's about it. You can see the three, obviously, but you can see the five. But <coughs> no place to put it. It's a seven ball, not the three. <laughs> Get my reds mixed up here today. It's gonna be the lighting in here that's messing me up. Try to kiss that seven. Doesn't have to say how it's going to get there, it just has to call the pocket. And he decides he's going to put his seven into the corner. going to ram it hard if he does. Nope, not very hard. Oh, well, Colin's looking to put in his first ball. Let's see to 13. Shoot to nine. He didn't go behind the eight. <coughs> okay, Colin's going to put the ten down into the corner here. Not really. Well, can Seaver see the seven? That's the question. He can see it. He can see it. Putting some bottom on it. Now draw it back, apparently. Pretty good shot there, Calvin, or what? Yep, pretty good shot. It wasn't a very, very good, remember that? Was it last year? Very, very good shot. You left yourself uh, with no room no, for no, very, no very, room. very. Yeah. <laughs> it drops in. Seaver <laughs> is going to break. We each got one. Oh, it's first game. That was the first game of the match. So. We'll see, Calvin, if this is the first time today that we can do it in two games. Every match has been three games. Wow. <laughs> ball didn't even move. The sign of a good rack, right? Absolutely. They're spread all over the table. 
Well, Calvin, you notice when the guys break the balls, how they spread all over the table? Well, when you get into some locations and the balls cluster up and they hug the rails and they hug each other, the reason for that is the friction. In a lot of these bar rooms, they don't change the balls and they're old balls that are not shiny. And what happens is they group together and they cluster and they roll in pairs. Uh, this way the game goes faster, it's more wide open and it's more fun. So some of the locations the guys were in as we played this tournament, they were uh, very upset with the play of the tables. Well, you could bring your own balls, I guess. We could. Um, we brought our own cue ball in the past. A lot of these cue balls in the bar rooms, they just, they don't take well to English. They absorb the English. And it's very hard to play these games. So probably next year we will bring a set of balls. Is uh, buying a set of balls a big expense for a bar? Well, actually, if they would talk to the vending company that puts the pool table in there, they get them for free. But if they don't say anything, they'll leave those old balls there. And actually, it's just a detriment to everybody because if the new balls, the games go faster, they got to pay for themselves in no time. set of balls uh, on a retail price run from 59 to 129 dollars so it's not very much money and like I say you can get a lot more games of pool out of a day in an establishment so I think it'd be advantageous to change the balls at least once a year I'd recommend probably just before Halloween you can always get rid of your old ones Halloween night. Sure. Or actually, they cover the pool tables about once a year, you know. And when they cover the pool table, if they put a new set of balls with the table, it'd be like kind of like, uh, you know, like daylight savings time tomorrow, everybody should change the batteries and their smoke alarms and whatnot. Well, when they change the cloth on the table, if they change the balls, everybody would be happier. spot for Bill to be in right now. <laughs> I'm going to try to bring back the nine and put it in the side behind him or actually behind where the cue ball is. The English just didn't take on that one, Calvin. You'd think that it would come over toward the pocket, but it just didn't, uh, didn't take on it. Slamming the one. And shoot to seven in the corner. Slams that one. Isn't it harder to get the, the leave you want, the harder you hit that ball? Generally speaking, Calvin, I would say that's true. What Cal, um, Herbie's got so much experience in this game that he puts that cue ball all over the table. He just got some really good draw on that. So I wouldn't recommend that a beginner watch this game because he wouldn't be able to do what Herbie does with a cue ball. And he drew that back perfect for his two. Again, you know, it's not a beginner shooting. He did get a very good break out there. He may even have a shot on his six.
Get the five first. All right. Seaver's going to try to uh, kiss it off the 11, you think? I think he's going for the 13 straight in. Right. I think, oh, can you see it? Okay. See, from my, your angle. Yeah, my angle here. I just uh, didn't see that he could see that. I'd just like to bring up a point here, Calvin. Now, uh, Mike Finnegan's not playing right now, but uh, he was put down in the loser's bracket right off the bat, and he's gone two matches into the loser's bracket. And a number of years ago, he got done uh, put down there right at the beginning, and he came all the way through and took second. So this is going to be an interesting day. That wasn't a good thing to do for Bill. Okay, Herb Collins has the... Uh as the eight to uh, block in a couple of balls here, he's going to try to eliminate that situation. Again on a scratch, it's ball in hand. Looking to tie this up at one game apiece. The shoot is three and have to come back for the five. And then the eight takes the other end. And slams it hard. Uh, you got to do more than just make that five. He's got to get in position to get the eight, which is down at this end. There's a lot of spin on it. He's going to come in this corner and slice it in here. This would even it up. This would even it up if he does it. And he does it. He's going to go for a decisive game three. Once again. Okay, after this game, uh, this particular match will be over and we'll have another player eliminated. We'll be down to just four, three of whom will uh, receive a trophy and a cue stick of value. Collins with the break. And he got uh, a strike. Well, Herb Collins. Still a choice, even though he made it a high ball. He's got a choice. Going with the high ones, he's going to try to put a 13 down in the far corner. He does. This is our 10th or yeah, tenth match of the day. Possibly four or five, or one or the other remaining. This will be the last. One we'll see in this uh, episode, I believe, for most of the viewers. Now I'm going to shoot the 14. Follow on. That ball move it makes it dance. Hits it hard with a lot of spin. <clears throat> have to try to slice into the corner. Doesn't quite do it. 
comes back, knocks the eight out. Would have been in pretty pretty good shape if he'd made it. Now Seaver probably doesn't want to give uh, Collins another shot. Shoot to seven. Going to the corner. Now go for the four ball. Ball. Puts it right in. Gonna put the three down below. Five put the five in. And comes back and has position on the one if he decides to go for it. The one is on the bank. He has a good shot at it, so he might decide to get it now. Although he might go for that six. Six would be more a possibility of a scratch on the side. So he's going to go for the one. Yeah. We'll attempt to put the six into the side. We're going to have to wait till his head moves before we see it. Nope, he's going to give us a, sh a view of it. Isn't that nice of him? Hits the corner of the bank. The loser of this game is the loser of the match and eliminated. Collins looking for the 15. Just wanted to mention, Calvin, that uh, four of our players today, uh, Rick Giro, Gary Dubuque, Herbie Collins, and Mike Finnegan, are all shooting with cues that they've won here in past tournaments. And they're all in it, so one, two, or three of them could take home another one today. Slam it. I think you'll play this one easy. Was that a slam? No. Herb Collins will advance, and Bill Seaver has been eliminated. And for uh, many of you, this will wrap up this episode of this 11th annual tournament. And some of you will continue. For others, we will wrap up. With